Now time for member statements. The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise today on behalf of Patrick Brown and the PC Caucus in recognition of Community Health and Wellbeing Week. During this week, Ontario's 109 community health centres, Aboriginal health access centres, community-governed family health teams and nurse practitioner-led clinics are holding special events across the province. This, the week's events are coordinated by the Provincial Association, the Association of Health, Ontario Health Centres. The theme this week is Community Health and Wellbeing Shift the Conversation, creating a new kind of dialogue about health and health care. As things stand now, far too many Ontarians experience preventable illnesses because of our fragmented health care system remains poorly prepared to address the most important detriments of good health, access to good nutrition, housing, social supports, employment, economy, income and education. This province needs to do a much better job responding to these detriments of health. During Community Health and Wellbeing Week, the focus is on the very, this very important principle. To improve health and well-being, we need to promote community vitality and people's sense of belonging to that community. Research tells us when people live in caring and connected communities that make them feel like they belong, then they are more likely to be healthy. So in community health centers, in addition so in community health centres, in addition to doctors and nurses who provide medical services, there are health promoters and community development workers who run initiatives designed to create more connected and caring communities for everyone to feel more valued and acceptable. Accepted. There are two excellent examples of community health centres in my riding, the Central CHC in St. Thomas and the West Elgin Community Health Centre. Community health centres were introduced by the PC Party 40 years ago when John Roberts was Premier, and in 1982, under the leadership of Bill Davis and Health Minister Larry Grossman, they transitioned from pilot projects into the mainstream health system. Our party is very pleased to be joining community health centres and other members of the Association of Ontario Health Centres celebrating Community Health and Wellbeing Week. Their efforts promoting community vitality and a sense of belonging are vital to ensure the best possible health and well-being for everybody living in Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further members, thank you, Mr. Member from Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's my honour today to rise and talk about a phenomenal woman. Her name's Peggy Nash. Uh, she was the MP for Parkdale High Park for over 10 years. Uh, this was a woman who was Buzz Hargrove's EA when she started out, uh, co-founder of Equal Voice across Canada, winner of many awards, including the YWCA's Woman of the Year Award, which we celebrated in downtown Toronto. And she's actually the woman who mentored me, who got me into politics, who asked me if I would consider running for the new Democratic Party. A phenomenal worker, uh, a, a phenomenal activist, uh, tireless in her advocacy uh, for all of those who needed her most, the founder of the Parliamentary Friends of Tibet, for example. And because Peggy's such a classy woman, she would want me to thank all of her campaign staff, her campaign manager, Jill Marzetti, and all of the volunteers, of which there were hundreds in our riding. And finally, she would want us to congratulate a referati who did win and who's our new MPP. So Peggy, we love you. Whatever you decide to do in your next career, we still love you. Thank you so much for everything you gave and everything you did for Parkdale High Park. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Northumberland, Northumberland Quinty West. Well, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, yesterday, Canadians across the country, including myself and my wife, had the opportunity to go to the polls and exercise their democratic right. They had the opportunity to vote for a person who would best represent their communities and values in Ottawa and support investments in health care, infrastructure, and their economy. As well as here, important, I'll get there in a minute. As well as other important issues such as affordable housing, environment, environment protection, and retirement savings. Mr. Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate the very first elected member of Parliament for the new riding on Northumberland Peterborough South, sure. Kim Rudd, sure. and the very first member of Parliament elect for the Bay of Quinty riding, Mr. Neil Ellis. Great. As an active volunteer with their community, MPP elect Rudd understands the value of these kinds of partnerships and investment mean to our communities and how they will affect all. all all the constituents. As a former mayor of Belleville, MPP, MP Ellis was so well aware of the importance of, for cooperation within different levels of government. This is crucial for the success of Northumberland Queen West region, for the province of Ontario, and for our great country. I'm excited to be able to sit down with my federal counterparts in the coming weeks and months to discuss issues that help build Ontario up. I take tremendous courage to 
to anyone to make the decision to put their names forward and run for an election. We had many local candidates who stood up for the constituents of North Omniquini West with honor thank and you. pride. I would like to thank them all for, for taking that on. Thank you. Thank you. Member statement. Member from Leeds Grenville. Well, thanks, uh, Speaker. Beginning on October 13th this year, people of Hindu faith across Ontario have been observing Navratri. Navratri is a festival dedicated to the Hindu deity Durga. A common form of celebration during this festival is participating in the Indian dance called Garba. Over the past few weeks, Hindu communities from different parts of the province have been hosting Garba parties. I had the great pleasure of attending a few Garba parties with our leader, Patrick Brown, in Brampton and Vaughan recently. We took part in the festivities and we actually learned a few new moves uh, with, with thousands of, uh, of Hindu Ontarians. The kindness and welcoming nature of our Hindu friends was a true representation of what it means to be Canadian. It is time such as Navratri that we as Ontarians have an opportunity to learn more about the different cultures that contribute to this great province. I encourage all Ontarians to take time to enjoy the diversity of our population. We're very privileged to live in a province and a great country where we can share the best of many cultures and learn about the many different religions, such as the Hindu religion. The Hindu community in Ontario, consisting of almost 400,000 people, are vital to the economic, social and cultural vibrance of this province. On behalf of Patrick Brown and the official opposition, I wish all Hindus across Ontario a joyous Navratri, and we look forward to celebrating Diwali with all of you in November. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Kitchener, Waterloo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Last Friday, I had the pleasure of addressing the Women of the Year Awards in Stratford, hosted by Optimism Place, a women's shelter. In this speech, I talked about the importance of women entering the political arena so that the ever-present power imbalance between men and women might finally be addressed. Progressive legislation and policy needs to be inclusive of all voices. Women rarely see themselves or hear their voices and concerns in political debate. Certainly, the issue of violence against women is as current an issue as it always was and always will be until a culture of acceptance is addressed head on. While the political pundits and pollsters will analyze the federal election from last night, uh, of the 338 elected, only 88 will be women, 26 per cent women, up only one percentage point from the last parliament. And while many voters may have chosen dramatic change in Canada's political landscape last night, uh, one thing remained virtually unchanged, the proportion of women who will serve in the federal parliament. Uh, a highlight for me, though, was last night I drove Heather to the poll. It was her first time voting. She was in her 60s, and she was intimidated by the experience, but was so proud to cast a vote for the first time. It provided a good bookend to the day as I had taken my daughter Claire to vote as part of the Equal Voice campaign, Take a Girl to Vote, earlier that day. We have a lot of work to do. And we will only be able to refer to our country as equal, as progressive, as just, when the government of the day, regardless of the political stripe, is truly reflective of the population, which must include women and must include electoral reform. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, for the member Simpson, the member for Beaches East York. Well, thank you, Speaker. And it gives my, me pleasure to tell the House today about a great miracle that took place in my riding of Beaches East York. Wow. Last month. Last month, a rugby player with the balmy beach bleach, beachers playing at Fletcher's Field took a hit to the chest and his heart stopped. All his friends knew right away that there was a serious situation because he just collapsed without in any way trying to break his fall. Eric Shannon, who was nicknamed Cotton because of his soft hands, was clinically dead. So the trainer and the uh, medic, Caitlin Pertening, and two of his teammates Hayden Gage, who is a trained firefighter, and Connor McCann, who is also training to become a firefighter, they ran over and immediately started CPR. They did so for about 10 full minutes. Meanwhile, someone came, went out to the field and got a defibrillator. It took three shocks to get his heart going, but they did get it going. And a week later, he was released from hospital, fully healthy, as if nothing had happened. Now, Eric said that there should be a defibrillator at every single sports field, such as Fletcher's, and we agree with him. And I raise this to raise awareness so that we do take the time and the effort to ensure there are defibrillators at all public and private sporting arenas. I also like to raise the fact about the important training that firefighters get in life-saving techniques. Had it not been for that training, had it not been for the defibrillator, Shannon would not be with us today. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Remember 
Members, a statement of the member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I think the amazing part about statements is that you learn what's happening in each other's respective ridings. And uh, I appreciated the statement that we just heard from Beaches East York. And uh, I just want to share with you, there's a, a foundation called the David Bunsey Foundation in our area that raises funds for defibrillators for all arenas and sport fields. So hopefully it extends. So it, that was very good. But today, I'd also like to, through my statement, welcome the Ontario Environment Industries Association to Queen's Park. ONEA members are committed to providing market-driven solutions to today's environmental problems using world-class technologies that are both cost-effective and environmentally sound. Speaker, Ontario's environment and clean tech companies are vital to the health of our dynamic economy and provide industry with tools they need to succeed in world markets. Their innovative solutions help companies produce higher quality goods with a lower environmental impact, all the while reducing their energy costs. Truly, these companies help create win-win situations for everyone involved. Because of this, Speaker, Ontario's environmental industry is recognized globally for its innovative approach. This moving sector, comprised of more than 3,000 environmental companies and upwards of 65,000 employees, exports technologies and services approaching $1 billion in value to every part of the globe. In fact, this industry is so robust that last year, 75% of these particular businesses reported that they would be increasing their employees and hiring this coming year. I look forward to their reception this evening in the dining room, and everyone's invited. Thank you. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Etobicoke North. Thank you, Speaker. I'd like to speak for a moment regarding uh, Turkish Heritage Day, but begin by offering uh, congratulations not only to the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau, but also to the perpetually re-elected Dr. Kirsty Duncan, the MP-elect for the Great Riding of Etobicoke North. Speaker, the history of Turkish people and Turkish origin people in Canada is almost as old as Canada itself. Uh, people from the Ottoman Empire arrived on our shores in the early 20th century and established a life here in Canada. And what may be interesting for my colleagues to learn that people of Turkish origin are not merely from Turkey, but actually about 15 different other countries, which include Turkey, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Azerbaijan, even China, Iran, and Russia. And there's another group of people who are establishing themselves here, and I'll spell it, the Uyghurs, which is U-I-G-H-U-R-S, who are in fact uh, now basically been, uh, so let's say, subsumed within the mainland of China, but were originally part of the Ottoman Empire. It's a very vibrant community. There's about 50,000 plus and growing, many of whom make their home in Etobicoke North, and they have contributed, as you can imagine, on all different levels. The president and vice chancellor of the University of Waterloo, for example, uh, Canadian figure skaters, and acclaimed actors and comedians all hail from this community. I'm very proud to support them and uh, look forward to introducing Turkish Heritage Week subsequently. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Burlington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, I was pleased to represent the Ontario government at Heads Up 2015, a forum hosted by the Halton Equitable Drug Strategy Collaborative. The room was full of people from different walks of life, driven by a collective desire to address the complex issues surrounding drug use and addictions in our community. This Made in Halton strategy is focused on the vision of a safer, healthier, well-informed Halton that will work to prevent, reduce, and eliminate the stigma and harm from substance abuse. Mr. Speaker, to truly assist people suffering from addiction, to help future generations, and to protect our community from the dangers associated with drug use requires a multifaceted approach. Such an approach is possible through collaboratives like the Halton Equitable Drug Strategy, who are coordinating the efforts and expertise of people and services across our region. At Heads Up 2015, we celebrated the presentation of an Ontario Trillium Foundation grant of over $149,000. I am certain this Trillium Grant will assist in our combined efforts to make Ontario and Halton safer and healthier places to live. I am certain, too, that the individuals involved in this wonderful collaborative will add tremendous value. Mr. Speaker, as you well know, the Government of Ontario is currently entering into the second phase of our comprehensive mental health and addiction strategy. And I am proud to note that the goals of the Halton Equitable Drug Strategy are very much aligned with that strategy. By continuing to work together, we can make a real difference in the lives of so many people suffering from addictions, and we can ultimately build stronger, healthier communities. I congratulate the members of the Collaborative, and I look forward to working with them in the years ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements.